dispute became a continental storm. But here is where the crisis turned tragic. Leibniz appealed to the Royal Society of London, the most respected scientific body in the English-speaking world, for an impartial investigation. What he didn't realize was that the society was now ruled by one man, Sir Isaac Newton. When the judge writes the verdict, the Royal Society formed a committee to investigate the priority of calculus. On paper, this looked fair. In reality, Newton hand-picked its members. Worse, he secretly wrote the committee's final report himself. The report declared Newton the original inventor and implied, without explicitly stating, that Leibniz had plagiarized him. Newton then went a step further. He anonymously published a review praising the report's excellence. This wasn't just conflict, this was domination. Leibniz's reputation was damaged beyond repair. He spent his final years fighting accusations, falling into despair. When he died, almost no one attended his funeral. European mathematics fractured for generations. The British clung to Newton's notation. The continent embraced Leibniz's. The divide slowed scientific progress in England for almost a century. Newton's victory came at a cost far larger than either man realized. He had revealed a truth about human nature that is as old as history. The pursuit of truth and the pursuit of power often collide, and truth does not always win.